Hi, my name is Mary Ellen and I'm a paper artist and I'm also the author and the illustrator of this book called Snow. When I was little, my brother, who's a year older than me, we would go uh, outside and play in the snow. We grew up in New York State and we did all kinds of things and we used to describe the snow. We'd say, is it snowman snow? Is it icy snow? Is it fluffy snow? And based on what kind of snow we had, there were all the different kinds of activities that we would do. That's the inspiration behind this book. And um, I illustrated the pictures through hand cut paper snowflakes. So I learned how to make paper snowflakes when I was a kid. And I used to, in school, fold up paper and cut out different shapes with scissors. And as I got older and I spent time at my grandma's house with my family, my family started to ask me to do different challenges. They would say, can you cut out a Christmas tree? Can you cut out a snowman, a dog, a person? And as I practiced, I got better and better at cutting shapes into paper. So that is how I illustrated this book. And you can see on the cover is a snowman. So that's one of the snowflakes that we'll see. So I'll read the book to you and I hope you enjoy. Snow, story and hand cut paper snowflakes by Mary Ellen Van Dyke Brown. Can you tell what some of these snowflakes are? This is dedicated to my kids, Liam and Maisie. First snow, magic snow, swirling all around. Run to catch it on my tongue before it hits the ground. Crisp snow, crunchy snow, step and feel it crack. Take our puppy for a walk and leap from track to track. Light snow, puffy snow, grab my sled and run. Build a jump and fly so high, yippee! It's so much fun. Cold snow, windy snow, time to build a fort. Dig an igloo or a cave to crawl inside for warmth. Thick snow, packing snow, I have the perfect plan. Roll my snowballs, stack them up. Voila, a big snowman. Wet snow, snowball snow. Baseball sounds like fun. Find a pitcher, grab a bat, and crack a snow home run. Hard snow, slippery snow, slide in winter boots. Skate across the driveway, practicing toe loops. Fine snow, fluffy snow, land and make a poof. Spread my angel wings and watch the snow wisp from the roof. Oops. Deep snow, feet of snow, carve it out with gloves. 
Use my boots to spell out words for planes up high above. Warm snow, melty snow, mittens on the rug. Curl up by the fire as we sip our cocoa mugs. Soft snow, sleepy snow, watch while tucked in bed. Make a wish on falling flakes, adventures in my head. At the back of the book, there's some instructions on how to fold and cut a snowflake. And I can teach you how to do that in another video. Okay, so let's learn how to fold a paper snowflake. I'll take a piece of paper. The first fold that you do is the short end to the short end. We call this the hamburger fold. Line it up right on that corner, nice sharp corner, and then flatten it across. Then you'll take it and fold it in half again just enough to make a little pinch here. So you have this notch right here. Then you're going to, on this top edge, just about an inch from the side. Make a little mark with a pencil. And then this is a trick. You line that little mark up with the notch Use another piece of paper to make a guide, or you can use a ruler. And then fold it up along that piece of paper, like this. So that edge of the paper should point right at that little mark. And it should begin, that fold should begin where you made your notch in the center. Then, when you fold it back over like this, you should be able to line this edge of the paper right up here. Keep a nice sharp point right there. And when you open it up to peek inside, see this edge should be right along that fold. That's a nice tight fold. And you have one more fold to do. So I kind of use my fingernail to make a dent in the bottom. And then you want to line this edge. You're folding it up. I'm going to line that edge right along the other side. Kind of like a paper airplane. I call this the pizza fold because when you cut it out, it looks like a slice of pizza. And then I like to trim the extra off. So I see this little piece right there on the edge. I start there and then I go right across like this. And I give it a little curve so that this side is about as long as this side. And now you are ready to make a paper snowflake. Okay, so let's try to make a paper snowflake with a cat face on it. So I'll use my pencil to draw um, my design. And when I do my designs, I do them on the side of the paper where it's all folded up like this. And that's just because this side over here can sometimes slide around. So it's a little easier to cut through and hold on to. This side of the paper it doesn't shift around as much. And when you cut a snowflake, you're cutting through 12 layers of paper at the same time. So you just have to be really careful to hold on tight and not let the paper slide around too much. All right, to do a cat face, cats have eyes. So I'm going to put a 
an eye here. I'll do a nose right here against the fold and a mouth. And let's add a couple whiskers and the head, big ear. We'll do the side of the face like this and then down to a body like this. So you can see when I do a design, I'm really just drawing half of a cat. And that's because when you fold it open, the rest of the cat will show up. So we're just practicing and working with symmetry. Anything that is symmetrical, you can cut out on a paper snowflake. And symmetrical means the same on both sides. Whenever I have something like eyes, I always do them first with a hole punch. It's just a little bit easier to do it when you have more paper to hold on to. So we'll start with that. And then we'll do the nose. And the whiskers and mouth. Thank you, Macy. Are just lines. So in order to cut them out, we need to do a line out and then another little line right like that so that the paper actually comes out and then we'll do our second whisker our third whisker And the smile. And then all we have to do is go around the edge, cut out the ear, go down around the side, and then down like that. And then I think I'll add on one more thing, and that will be a heart. I'm gonna put the heart right down here. Ooh. We love cats in our house. So here's the cat. We'll open it up. And by and the see. way, I did show you. You see its face? And there's the whole thing. So now that we know how to fold a paper snowflake out of a regular piece of printer paper, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about how I decide what to cut and what to leave on the piece of paper. If you flip to the back of the book, back to where the instructions are, you can see these triangles here. That's about the size of a piece of paper when it's all folded up, ready to cut out. And so these are from some of my paper snowflake patterns. And the black part is the part that would normally be cut out, and the white part is what would stay. That would be made of white paper. So if you look at them, you can see half of what will be cut out. When you fold it, you'll see the full gingerbread man, 
and the full snowman and the full sled. So when I'm deciding what to cut and what to leave, I'm trying to think in my mind what would normally be a darker color and what would be a lighter color. We're talking about positive and negative space. The part that's cut out is the negative space and the part that you leave is the positive. So let's go back and take a look at one of my illustrations here. So for the penguin, the white belly I knew would need to be made out of white paper. And anytime you do a hole punch for the eyes, that needs to be on white. So if you think about that design, then you can start to think about, okay, if that's white, what would need to be black? And that black part would need to be cut out. So you can look at it and think, all right, I was looking at it and I was cutting out kind of just what you see here between my fingers. Half of an igloo, half of a penguin. And I always kind of sketch out my designs in a notepad first, double check what I think will work, and then I test it out. Sometimes I have to refine my design and try it again. Sometimes I snip through some of the thin pieces and I have to start over. That's just part of the process. This is a good example of positive and negative space. This is a little one on a sled going down a hill. <clears throat> so I wanted a really big hill and then I wanted a way to show that this person is moving. So I cut out this showing that he came down from the top of that hill. He's shooting up snow out to the sides. But if you look at him really close, it looks kind of funny because look, his head is not connected to the rest of his body because I had to cut out the scarf. But when you back up and look at it as a whole, you can tell who that he's a little person. You can tell that that's a scarf. And then it kind of combines together into this larger snowflake. This is one of my favorite ones because if you look at it from really far away, it just looks like a snowflake. And then as you get closer to it, you say, oh, I see. That's a person going sledding. There's something on this page that is not symmetrical. Can you tell what it is? I had to do a little trick on this page. My trick is the dog's tail. Everything that you cut needs to be symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. But if I were to do that, then the dog would have two tails. So I did a little trick. I cut the tail out while it was folded. When it was unfolded, I just snipped it off the side over here. So I went around the snowflake and I snipped the extra tail off each of the dogs. And I do that from time to time. If I think that a design needs to show something that's not symmetrical, I'll see if I can uh, do that little trick. There's something that's a little bit different about this page too. And you can compare it to this page. So if you count, how many snowmen are there? There are six. How many penguins are there? There are six. Snowflakes have six sides to them. But check this out. How many baseball players are there? There are 12. The reason that there are 12 is because when I cut the snowflake out, I cut a whole person. I didn't cut a half like I normally do it. When I did the snowman on the piece of paper that was folded up, looked like a piece of pizza, I cut out half of a snowman so that when I folded it open, you could see the whole thing. But because it's really hard to cut a picture of someone playing baseball symmetrically, you know, you would have to be looking straight forward. And I thought it looked a little bit better for him to look to the side. 
So I cut out a whole person. And when that opens up, then you see two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So that's something you can try too. And then my last little trick on this page, I wanted it to look like it was snowing outside this child's window. So I took those hole punch snippings from the teeny tiny hole punch that I have that I used on this page. And I opened up the hole punch and I shook them out and I put them inside the window. So I sprinkled some here and some there after I had laid it flat. And then I took a picture of the snowflake laying flat with all the little tiny dots inside the window looking like little snowflakes falling. So that's why each window looks a little bit different. So those are some of my tricks. And this is what I, I do like to do this when I'm thinking of any new designs. I sketch out a little triangle and I think about the parts that I would cut and the parts that I would leave. And I draw them out just like this. So now I'd like to show you some of the paper snowflakes I made when I was younger and some of the paper snowflakes that I made more recently. This is a picture frame that I gave to my grandma. You can see my name is down here. You can see it says 2001, 19 years ago. And I made a Christmas tree, a wreath, and a snowman. And I actually used a tiny pin to poke the eye holes and the buttons into the snowman. One thing that you'll notice about these snowflakes is that there are one, two, three, four of each thing instead of six. That's because when I learned how to fold snowflakes, I learned how to fold them a little bit differently. So instead of having six of each item, when you unfolded it, there were four. So this is how I learned to fold them so that there were four. Fold it in half. Fold it in half. Fold it in half. Let's see how this cat looks and we'll compare it to the other. Four cats as opposed to six cats. So when I learned to cut out snowflakes, I learned to cut out four. And that is easier to cut because you're only cutting through eight layers of paper instead of 12. It's also just a little bit easier to fold things in half than it is to fold it up in thirds like I showed you before. So if you're just getting started and you want to cut out snowflakes that have four sides, that is a perfect way to start. That's exactly how I started. And then as you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, you can cut out the six because snowflakes in real life have six sides. Those are, you know, 20 years old. Let's take a look at some snowflakes that I've made in the last year or two. Can you tell what these are? These are unicorns and there are 12 of them because I cut out the whole unicorn body. I put it against the super sparkly background paper. This is another animal. There are 12 of them. Can you tell what they are? These are fawns. They have little spots on their back. And this is one of my favorites. These are dragons.
can see their head, their wings, and they're facing each other. And here is one more. I think you might recognize this one from the cover of the book we read. This is a snowman. And this one is a symmetrical cut. So there are six. Now we're going to play a game. The game is called Guess That Snowflake. I will show you a snowflake that I've cut that's folded up and you see if you can guess what it will be. What do you think this will be when it's unfolded? Remember that it's something symmetrical, so it'll be the same on both sides. Can you guess what it is? This is a turkey. It's one of my favorite snowflakes to do. And then I like to color all the different feathers. How about this one? Can you guess what this is? Look at all those holes. What could that be? Look at this interesting shape at the top. This is a Christmas tree with a star on the top and a trunk and a tree skirt. I have lots of different size hole punches so that I can make all different kinds of ornaments. Speaking of hole punches, this is an interesting shape with lots of hole punches. Can you guess? So let's count. It has one, two, three, four legs on half of its body. So how many legs would it have on its whole body? It would have eight. This is an octopus. And these are the tentacles. This was a really fun snowflake to make. And our last one has letters in it. Only some letters are symmetrical. Other letters that you can't really incorporate into a snowflake very well because they're not symmetrical. What do you think this would spell when you open it up? Let's take a look. M O M. Or W. O W. So it could either say mom or wow. And when you open the whole thing, it kind of says both because the snowflake goes around in a circle. So the top ones look like they say mom and the bottoms look like they say wow. I hope you enjoyed reading snow with me and learning a little bit more about paper snowflakes. And I hope that at home, you get a chance to practice some paper snowflakes on your own. See what you can do, experiment, try again. And remember that the more you practice, the more you'll like what you see. And if you have any great paper snowflakes that you'd like to share with me, you can find me on my website, papersnowflakeart.com. And I love to see the designs that other people come up with too. Thank you.